Uh, do you now do you speak some Thai? Yeah, Are a little bit. Fluent? Yeah. No, oh. I'm not fluent. No, no, I'm not fluent. But you know, I can I can I can order food, I can direct taxis, I can say something for us. Say something for us. Like maybe you know my name is my. <laughs> <laughs> That means that means hello, how are you? Oh, that's awesome. What's up? It's another episode of Fairway to Heaven. It is a lip golf podcast and your regular host at Sue and Hang and Jerry Foltz, both part of the regular broadcast team. Foltz, obviously, uh, in the booth analyst and I am on course analyst. And, uh, you know, our bosses just thought these guys don't spend enough time together. So why not just yeah. make them spend more time together on the weeks off? Uh, so here we are, uh, our very first original series. Uh, we both used to play. Well, I think Fultzy, I would say safely, was a much better player than me. Um, no, no, we we competed because playing implies talent. We both competed. Oh, People well, ask me both... when I quit playing. I said long before I quit competing. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, in a world of liars, that is the truth. Um, yes, we both sucked at golf and ended up basically on the other side of the ropes and uh, talking heads, basically, for golf, mm -hmm. which um, I have to say, it's it's a dream job. Doesn't suck. Me. Doesn't I, suck. I, I enjoy this so much more than playing uh yeah yeah I, I mean it's easier it really is easier it's not for everybody but it's easier it the pressure is different because in golf yeah. what you what you shoot is essentially and not to overstate it but who you are the, the, you can't yeah. hide your score the whole world knows it. it's black and white it, we're in a subjective business where somebody else makes a decision that could affect your your career uh mm -hmm. your job your pay everything else so that's the that's the hard part to get used to when you quit playing but by the same token i was in charge of how much money i made when i played and i didn't make much <laughs> neither did i i was broke as fuck. uh holy crap uh a lot to cover so let's get right to it uh last week was Please do. awesome john rom john ram Finally getting his very first win on Live Golf. Um, it was his time, wasn't it? It just was. It was yes, his time. absolutely. Without he, question, it was his time. When he missed that putt on 17th, though, I was like, <clears throat> I could yeah, you know, feel the atmosphere just like uh, all of us were like, holy shit. But then you have fans, obviously UK fans, who were rooting for Terrell. Who are like cheering, and I could hear from I was standing on the 17th green, obviously, and then Dom and his group behind were on the 17th tee, and everyone that was standing behind the tee box could watch what was happening on the on the green, and we could hear everything <laughs> that was happening on the on the tee box. So we could hear all the echoes of the cheers and stuff. Um but uh yeah. And then Tyrrell, obviously, on the 18th, um, that was a tough second shot that he had. Mm, yeah, because the drive didn't get up top, but still, I mean, yes, it was. He didn't hit a bad shot, and it wasn't an overly difficult two-putt, but it wasn't easy either. And then, you know, when you have when you have a left to rider for your final putt, it's, I mean, you could dot the landscape of golf history with missed clutch putts on the final hole that are left to rider. Start, I mean, you don't have to look back any farther than Bernard Langer at the 91 Ryder Cup. Uh, with the whole cup oh, on the Rory. line, all the pressure in the world. Rory's as well. Rory's left to right around 18, but that was a hard putt. The one he missed on 16 was very similar to the one Rom missed, which was a very, mm -hmm. very short putt. At least Rom admitted to hitting a bad putt. He said he misread it, obviously, um, yeah. but he didn't hit it where he wanted. It, uh, yeah, it happens. My God, it, we. And then, of course, honor bomb. I mean, it just, it yeah. just seems to be like crazy right now. And like I told you, son, uh, no, I didn't see a Sunday night, but. Sometimes, I mean, it was in a thrilling event, sold out crowd, raucous as could be, a lot mm. of fun, everything that live golf is is meant to be. Uh, but I just, I, some reason, I don't like seeing missed putts on the last hole. I just I don't know, like that. I, I like, know, especially like, like seeing a three the putt. exuberance. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. a three putt. You know, it kind of really takes a little excitement out of it. And, and you know, I spoke to John post round during an interview, and obviously he said it's not really the way he would have wanted to win it. 
you know, he, he it's not one of the many things that is unique about live golf, right? Quite often you end up competing against your own teammate. Um, quite often right down to the very last. I mean, Bond, for example, obviously got it kind of taken away from him in Chicago last year when Bryson shot lights out basically in the final yeah. round. Um, it, it's just it, but you can tell from his reaction that he was disappointed for Terrell. Um, he felt for Terrell, and he even said to me, he kind of, he's like, look, I kind of almost wish we battled it out in a playoff. Um, but I'm sure in hindsight, you know, he's probably just like, look, a win's a win, and yeah. he deserved it. You know, he played so well in the final round. I followed him all. all it was a bit of a slow start for John, and I was like, not quite really getting things going. And then he really stepped on the pedal and just played lights out, basically. Um, yeah. Well, especially when Ogletree got off to a hot start and had a four-shot lead with, what, uh, like 15 or 16 holes to go. And it wasn't until he hit... Mm -hmm. Didn't one too many clubs on eight that he made double there. And it was, you know, kind of a sloppy double from there. And then uh, was it yeah. 14? I saw I saw him Monday at the airport, talked to him for about 10 minutes. And uh, and then on 14, literally, if that ball bounces forward, he's got a, a he pulled it a little bit, probably didn't hit maybe a half club less than he needed. But um, and it rolls down the hill into Deadsville. If that thing just kicks forward, and stays on the green, it's an easy two putt and it's a whole different ball game. And, and instead, yeah. You, you know, the mind starts reeling at that point, and it's been a long time since he's been in that position against this level of competition. So he said he learned from it, um, and he'll – obviously the confidence is there. But, he, I mean, with Rom getting off to – everybody getting off to a bit of a slow start, but except for Ogletree. When Ogletree birdied the first hole, he was the only player in the top 25 to birdie the first hole, which is awesome. I mean, that is showing – that you're not feeling the pressure. And then later in the mm -hmm. day, I think he started trying to force things and that's when it all hit the fan. Well, didn't he go birdie birdie? I think he went birdie. Uh, he, bird, he had two birdies. Oh, is it birdie par birdie? I think birdie par birdie. Yeah. Yeah. Birdie, birdie par, par birdie. five. Yeah. And then what? Well, yeah. I think it was five over in his last 11 holes. So, um, yeah. Uh, but you know, like you said, uh, he's really had a, a rough season. I know he's battled a wrist injury. He's trying to, tinker and been trying to find something to kind of take off the pain uh to hit a fade and you know he admitted that right uh on saturday and so i'm sure th there were a lot of great things to take away from that for him and that certainly his result last week got him way up in the points and um i think he was pretty close to if not in the relegation zone right i think yeah he, uh, i think he i think he just climbed out of it i think he yeah. had just i'm sure he had actually yeah so uh, but no, he's in. He's safely in the open zone for this season end, which gives you know doesn't give him any guarantees. If Phil right. goes out and finds you know recruits a couple of bigger names with better resumes, it might be you know it might be tough for him to find a home. But um, but it certainly takes away the necessity to go back to the relegation of it and the crapshoot that can be. Because I don't know. I mean, we might have three. We don't know exactly how many places will be on offer. So, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I guess he he has Greenbrier left really to secure his spot. I don't, obviously it depends, and you're the you're good at at all the points and the math um, with that. But I'm guessing depending on how everyone else who's ahead of him plays, he could certainly get himself into the top twenty four, right? At Greenbrier. Well, you have Greenbrier and Chicago still. And it's Chicago, not, yeah, yeah. But he's got twenty nine points now. He's in thirty first place. He's solid. Uh, 24th place is da, 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 35 points. Sam Horsfield. I, yeah, I really thought, I mean, last year it was 55 to get in, and it looks like we're going to come up short of that, probably because um, we have more people playing now. Yeah, there's more players, yeah. They, yeah, and they didn't award more points. Still a minimum of 50. So, yeah, he could, you know, another, a couple of top fives, and he's in. He's in the top yeah. 24. Yeah, yeah um but so yeah it, it's good to see him play well i mean last year he was dominant on the international series i mean what a great story um really for for andy you know he he got in the first year then played his way into the top 24 while he was international series winner so um rankings winner so then he got in from there and then got picked up and then now he's trying to play his way back in um it just proves kind of that the, the the strength of field, not just on our side, but even on the international series side. Um, so that's really impressive. Anyways, congratulations also to Legion 13. Four wins. Four.
and it's their inaugural year. That's what Torquay did last year. They won four. That's exactly what Torquay did. What did four aces do the first year out of eight events? Didn't they win five, including a the lot. team championship? Yeah, I think they did, yeah. 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 But the once dominant a, four aces. Yeah, well, it was three scores counting, wasn't it? Um, for three, all, uh, all two, all scores. Three two scores. Two scores and two scores. Then three on it? Sunday. Right. And then we I think we changed it middle of that year or beginning of 23. Right. To be three scores and then four scores. Um, yeah. And that changed a lot of things, obviously, with new players coming in. That also changed a lot of things with the shifts and in, in, in trades within teams. That changes a lot of things as well. So, um, yes, congrats to Legion 13. But I think Crushes is still in the lead, huh? Uh, solid. Yes. Too solid. Yes. yes but mm. But the uh, the lead has been dwindled, much like Joaquin. Joaquin went in dwindled. with over a forty point lead, which meant he couldn't meant he couldn't be passed. Uh, fortunately, he played well enough on Sunday to get up there in that tie. Well, tie for second. Tie for um, second so now it's only a, a twenty, yeah, twenty four and a half point lead. So if Waco can beat Rom and they both have high finishes in Greenbrier, he could literally go into into Chicago having it locked up, which would this could would be a lot of fun for him. I was going to say, I mean, remember last year, the individual uh, championship in Jeddah and how like crazy things were shifting. It was between like yeah. Cam and Taylor Gooch coming yep. right down to and the last Bryson. day. And Bryson. Yeah. Bryson. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, by the front nine, it was just so clear that Taylor was going to win it, you know. Um, yeah. So this year, who knows? It could be Rom, Waco. Tyrrell's up there, right? Yeah, um, he is. And... It could, well, I'll go down the list with you. It's it's pretty impressive, to be honest. It's uh, we go Waco, Waco, Rom, Hatton, Sergio, Louis without a win is at 118 points. So, I he couldn't, he could not actually physically win the thing unless Waco doesn't earn another point the next two events. So basically Hatton, Rom, and Joaquin are fighting with outside chances for the individual title. But then you go, you can go way down the list. Louis, Cam Smith, Dean Burmester, Bryson DeChambeau. The guy played three straight majors and only six human beings beat him. And he's in eighth in our league. You go Paul Casey and then Brooks Kepka, Taylor Gooch. I mean, he's quietly having a really good year at 11th. I know. I mean, it's, I, I you know, it's, I always say this, it's for a season that he had last year, Taylor, it's so difficult to come back the season and, and like win the way he did last season. Obviously, we've got new yeah. players that joined us too, right? Um, but so much happened for him during the off season with a new child, run a bit of his house. You got a, a professional bull riding team. There's a lot going on for that guy. But still, like yeah. you said, he's just quietly plodding his way around. And how about Waco? Can't shake the yeah. guy. He literally can't no. shake that. He's like, he's like a freaking beast. Yeah. From Saturday, Sunday, his name just kind of creeps up, and then he's like, "Oh, oh, there it is, another top three. <laughs> he was and, and a great. Too. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I know. And Waco, a great opening round as of this recording in the first round of the Olympics. Yeah, and he just left good. his just left his putt short on the last hole. Oh wait, we don't have rights to the Olympics. I'm no. not. I'm not covering the Olympics. <laughs> Uh, but how about Cam, though? I mean, like, literally, like, when he started, we're like, oh, crap, this guy has, like, no chance, like, to win, yeah. you know, last week. And then he kind of quietly comes back, makes that pot on 18 for, I think, a solo second. I, I just, think it was it, tied second. Tied second? It was Cam, Cam, uh, Terrell, Cam, Walker, oh, yeah. Terrell. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, really exciting stuff. And speaking of the Olympics, we've got seven players playing in it. Uh, we've got Adrian Moronk. Abe Answer, Carlos Ortiz. We've got obviously Mito. Ram, David Puj, Mito, Waco. Uh, so good luck to all of them, and uh, hopefully one medals or a few medals. Hopefully, we no, I want hopefully the whole podium. We do, hopefully, I'm greedy. Yeah, hopefully we do like gold, silver, bronze, <laughs> and fourth Our guys place know, while we're at it. <laughs> our guy, our guys know how to do a podium. You know they oh, do. Yeah, it. that's true. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Touche. Uh, Anyways, touché. um, uh, really excited to get to know our next guest. Uh, we haven't got to spend that much time with him, so I'm really excited to get to spend some time with him. He's the leader currently of the International Series ranking. Uh, he's been playing for Crushes GC and playing really well, making a name for himself on the Live Golf League. It is John Catlin. 
All right. What's up? Where, Where are, you? are you at the moment? I know. I am. I am in Sweden, hanging out, Damn. hanging out with the girlfriend. I got a week off, and so it was a nice short flight from uh, Birmingham to Copenhagen, and then came up here. Very nice. Did she come yeah. with you? Did, was she there at JCB? Yeah, yeah. She was. She's been with me. She was there in Nashville. She flew in on Friday of Nashville, and we've been together since the whole time. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, hey, speaking cool. of JCB, I didn't get to see you last week after you hold out on 17. So uh, massive congratulations. Thank you. What a hold to do it on. I mean, it was literally the toughest part three last week. It played something like 225 yards. I mean, downhill, I know, but that whole location wasn't easy either. No, and the wind was out of the right and the pins on the right hand side of the green and I play a draw. And so it was uh, it was wasn't the easiest shot and uh, what did you what did you hit there times where it just happens exactly how i visualized it i mean i was i was seeing it pitch a little more left than it did but i definitely saw it coming in from that right hand side oh my god it must have good i mean there was some really good crowds in the back of 17 it must have gotten so loud well, that's part of why I went nuts. Like, you know, I mean, I was obviously, I was obviously excited about making the hole in one, but then I, I, I kind of like turned around and the whole stand was like standing up and beers were being thrown. And I was like, oh, oh. Okay, all right, I guess, I guess we're going nuts. <laughs> that's awesome. You should have done yeah. a shoey. <laughs> you should have just grabbed someone's beer and have a shoey. Um, yeah, that would have been pretty funny. Yeah, that was awesome. Well, what did you hit there? Seven iron. Seven iron. Nice. That played what? 30, yeah. played 30 down or 20, 20, 24? Something like that. 21, 24. Uh, I know, I know I was trying feet. to pitch it 191 yards. I remember that number. Uh, that number was stuck in here. Everything else I can't remember, but I was trying to land at 191. <laughs> By the way, I feel right. bad for whoever um, might have picked you for the $100,000 on the 14th hole. Uh, <laughs> And then you hole out on the 17th. I can totally see like all the fans who had picked you for the hole in 100,000 prize on LiveX be like, no, you got to be fucking yeah, you kidding, kidding me. me. This is unbelievable. And then what's funny is so I went, I went by the next day and as I'm walking into the party hole, I can hear them talking to the fans like, he made a hole in one on 17 yesterday. Maybe he can do it here today. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Um, Who are you ahead, playing Jerry? with? Because I remember they uh, they had to walk back up the hill to the tee to congratulate you. They were already trotting down as your ball was in flight. Was yeah, it uh, yeah. Poulter? So, yeah, it was uh, Patrick Reed and Ian Poulter. And the funny thing is yeah. I actually played with Patrick Reed when I shot 59 in Macau. So it's like we, he, I, I, I'm like, how much do I have to tell the tour? Like, okay, I'll pay to play with Patrick Reed because every time I do, no. something amazing happens. <laughs> but how crazy is this? Poulter was there when Chase Kepka made his hole in one in Adelaide last year. You remember the epic? I'm sure yes, you saw it I on do. the news. Yeah. So he was there for that hole in one. So I think you should just write into our tournament director and be like, can I just get paired with Poulter and Reed every single time I play? Yeah, correct. <laughs> I should do that. 100% I should do that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. Hey, so thank you so much for doing this, by the way, and, and appreciate your time. I know you're, you're spending some good quality time with your girlfriend. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, it. Yeah, so so you have a really interesting history with with your golf. You, you started out playing in the PJ Tour Canada and then you then ended up at the ADT. Can you just talk us through that journey of yours? Because how did you go from PJ Canada to the Asian Development Tour? So yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I have taken a very, very unconventional route um, when I turned professional, you know, it was this whole mindset of, you know, PGA tour. That was, that was, that was where I wanted to get to. That was it. That was my main focus. And so that's why I started with Canada. I did, I did the, it was web.com. I think at the time I did the Q school and I didn't make it. Um, and so I was trying to find somewhere where I could play, you know, play for the summer and, you know, maybe earn status that way. And so I did Canada. Um, I qualified through my first time in April. And so I, played that for 2014 and you know I played really well and but I just I felt like I wasn't like really going anywhere like I you know I played really solidly I think I finished like 10th or 11th on the order of merit uh it got me into final stage of Q school again or sorry second stage of Q school 
and I missed it again. And I was like, I feel like I'm hitting a wall. Like I need to do something different. And I was talking with my coach and he actually told me that I should go play the Asian tour. And I was like, the Asian tour? Like it, it wasn't anything that was even on my mind. Like I ne never, never even crossed my mind to do it. And uh, he was like, no, I really think you need to look into it. Like, I really think it's a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, he was like, he was pretty adamant. He was like, John, you really need to do this. And so I looked at it and I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, you know, it's a great opportunity. And so that's kind of how the Asian tour kind of came in. Like it wasn't anything I was thinking about, but my coach was looking out for me. And um, so I went over and I did Asian tour Q school uh, end of 20, end of 2014. Um, and I qualified through, so I had a full Asian tour card, but I still had status in Canada <laughs> and I was still kind of under that, like, Oh, I want to play the PGA tour. So I tried to do both in 2015 and that was just a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I a lost, lot of my, traveling, lost man. my card. And, uh, yeah, I lost my card on both tours. And, uh, so I went back to Asian tour Q school, qualified through again. Uh, actually, no, actually, sorry. I kept my card in Canada, but I lost my card on the Asian tour. Um, but I was like, man, this is exhausting. Um, and so, you know, I went back to Asian Tour Q school, earned that card back again. Because, again, like I couldn't quite decide. Right. <laughs> like I was kind yeah. of halfway between both of them. And um, so I did Asian Tour in 2016, tried to do Canada Tour again. I think I missed every cut. <laughs> and I was like, well, I think that pretty, pretty well tells you that it's like you need to you need to pick something. And um so it was the end of 2016. I'd pretty much played my last Asian tour event. Uh, I think I told uh, Evan this story as well in the Golf Digest. Uh, article. You did. Yeah. You yeah. Did. It was, it, you were holding your, you were holding your finger over the button to purchase an airline ticket to basically go get a job. Correct. To basically golf. be done. Yeah. yeah. Basically just yeah. be done. You know, I'd shot 77 in the final round of the tournament and I was just, I was fed up. I was done. Uh, you know, you're and, broke. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much broke, pretty much had enough yeah. money to pay for the ticket. And that was it. Um, and, you know, I literally have my thumb over it on the, on the United app. I remember, I remember it distinctly. There's a little thing where it says agree and purchase and I was about to do it and I just couldn't do it. I, I couldn't like, there's something inside of me that just wouldn't let me quit. And so, you know, it was a really easy bus ride to the next tournament. It was an, it was a ADT tournament <laughs> in uh, just, 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 just South Incredible. of Jakarta. The and, glamorous uh, bus ride through Asia, yes. Yeah, yeah, and all, yeah. and you know, my phone didn't work. We got stuck in traffic. Uh, oh, of course, Jakarta. Know, of course. <laughs> yeah, and so you know, it was. It, it, I, I was being tested again. Like, oh, are you sure you want to keep doing this? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I got to that tournament, and I just, I really felt like I had nothing to lose, and I just went out, and I, I just focused on what I could control. You know, I had I had seven or eight things I was focusing on that were all mental. And I was just like, I'm just going to focus on these things. I'm not going to let anything else in. I'm just going to focus on these things. And I won the tournament by three. And, it, you know, it's just funny how, like, sometimes you just got to get this wired right. And all of a sudden, other things just kind of fall in, fall into place. But, yeah, it's a pretty how crazy How much was that story. worth? How much was that win? It's not like you could retire. No, heck no, no. <laughs> I mean, I you know I might have been good for three or four more months, but that was about it. I yeah. think it was about twelve grand or something. But yeah. you know, in Asia, that yeah. that goes that goes pretty that, far. I mean, my oh I still yeah, have it the does. Same place. I still have the same place that I ended up I moving just, to after I won that tournament, and it's one hundred and fifty dollars a month. So I mean, that's, it's you know, that's it's, awesome. Yeah, I heard, I heard it is outside uh, the golf course where you practice at, and it's right on top of a bar. Well, not, uh, no, not, not entirely. <laughs> it's more of Aussie, a and, and, and an Aussie gentleman, like his bar. <laughs> an, an Aussie gentleman uh, yeah. rented out a, a room to you and you've been there ever since uh, going from Sacramento to Hua Hin, Yeah, That had to be a huge cultural shock for you. I mean, I can't think of two more different places than Hua Hin. And Sacramento, California. What yeah. was that like in terms of adjusting and kind of getting your head wrapped around the culture, the Asian food, all that stuff? Yeah. Well, I mean, that was part of what I told my coach when he's like, let's go to the Asian tour. I was like, I don't even know what's going to happen. And then, you know, so I get there and, 
you know, it was different. Like you said, you couldn't really think of two places that are more polar opposite. Um, you know, I just flown, you know, Sacramento, it was winter time, so it was really cold. And then I get to Thailand and it's, you know, thirties and humid and, uh, you know, so that was different. Uh, you know, the food was different. I hadn't really eaten much Thai food in my life. So, you know, that was different as well. And, uh, yeah, so it was, <laughs> it was, to, to, it, it was, it was a big change, but it was, it was a good change. Uh, you know, it made me grow up, made me realize, you know, yeah. there's, there's many ways to do this. And, uh, it was good. It was, it was, and I honestly, I fell in love with it. That's part of the reason why I still go back there. And, you know, it feels like my Asian home, you know what I mean? Like I love, I love Thailand, you know, Asia is awesome. Can't get much, you can't get much for $150 a month in Singapore though. I, I go <laughs> back. No, 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 no. Hey, um, you talk, you referenced your coach. Now to me, this is, got, I got so many questions I want to ask you about your coach and then knowing Bryson when you were younger as well. But sure. you reference him, Noah Montgomery. I mean, the guy sure. is just your, your prototypical PGA professional, isn't he? I mean, he spent a dozen years as a narc, a, a, an Oakland police department <laughs> narcotics officer, and then Correct. he becomes a golf guru. This is like a Hollywood script. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's an amazing person. You know, he's he's it's hard. Like, like, it's hard to put it into words because he means so much to me. Like he's, he's, yeah. he's a great coach, but he's a great man. Um, he's, he's been there for me through thick and thin. Uh, he's, he's believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. Um, but yeah, his, his backstory is anything but your prototypical, you know, path it's, it's not becoming a great golf yeah. coach. Uh, but I think that's what makes him, you know, able to look at it from a different perspective. Um, you know, he's really helped me with dealing with pressure. You know, a lot of people have said that you look really calm when you're out there on, you know, in pressure situations. And, uh, you know, I would say anything could be further from the truth. I mean, I'm nervous just like everybody else, but he's really given me a lot of tricks to really be able to calm myself, be able to stay in the present, be able to, you know, execute in those difficult, difficult, stressful situations because of his, you know, years as a narcotics officer in Oakland. I mean, that's some serious pressure. You know, I'm just swinging. I'm just swinging a golf club. I mean, that guy, that guy is uh, dealing with stuff that I can't even imagine. I mean, he's told me stories that I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like, uh, yeah. you know, and it's 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 an amazing relationship. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be the golfer or the person I am if I didn't have him in my life. So the fact that I do get to have him and I do, you know, get to call upon him is something that I I cherish greatly. Uh, what are some of his thoughts uh, on on live golf and you playing on our league? You, he thinks it's I'm awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's very, he's very, he's very supportive. Um, you know, he's uh, he's he's been very supportive of everything I've done. Um, you know, he he's he he's the one that told me to go to the Asian tour, and then you know, and then I told him about Europe, and he was stoked about it when I qualified for European tour, and then you know, I had a kind of had kind of a rough year, and he was. He was very supportive of me going back to the Asian tour. He's like, John, you've had success there before. You know, it's a great, great, great path to go back to. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll, uh, you know, you'll have some some good positive vibes from you know all, all of your success, and you know you'll probably you'll probably get right back on track. And he was right, you know. And most of the things he's told me have 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 led me down the right path. And uh, yeah, he's very supportive of Liv. Uh, you know, I told him, you know kind of as things progress, uh, you know, as I won international series Macau and then as mm -hmm. I got to be an on-site reserve and then, you know, being substituted in for Charles Howell and, you know, throughout that all process, I kind of kept him in, kept him in the loop. And he was like, you know, this is awesome. And he's like, if you, if you, if you, if you win one of these, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be sitting, sitting, sit, sitting at home with a big old <laughs> smile on my face. And so, yeah, he's been very, very supportive. That's awesome. You, uh, that is awesome. You, Right now, I mean, when Charles went down with the with the leg injury, and we still there's no still no official word whether he's going to return I, I, anytime soon, and there's only two more individual tournaments remaining. Um, right. Bry Bryson didn't waste any time in naming you the reserve to fill in for him because he knew you as a player, but he also knew you as a person. You guys had some history together when you were younger, junior golfers, I believe. Yeah, yeah, we. Uh, I've known him for. I think about 15, 16 years. I mean, you know, we grew up 
three hours apart. He grew up in Clovis. I grew up in Sacramento. We played a lot of, you know, we played JGA and C, Northern uh, Junior Golf Association of Northern California. We played a lot of those together. And then uh, I think he was a couple years behind me in college, um, but he went to SMU, went to New Mexico. So we were close by. We played a lot of the same tournaments there. Um, Jan actually showed me a picture of uh, us in a bracket at the California State Amateur. I'm not sure if Evan posted that or not, but uh, you know, we're both, we're both on there. Um, he, I think he made it a little further than I did, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then you got, you got actually got Xander Shoffley on that as well. So that was, that was pretty cool to see that picture, but yeah, Bryson and I go way back. Um, you know, I, I still remember playing with him when he had just switched to all clubs, same length. Uh, you know, he was trying to, trying to figure all that out and, you know, nobody really knew whether it was going to work or not. And, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I always, I always applauded him. You know, I think the beauty of golf is there's not one way to do it. And he thought yeah. that this is something that could make him better. And he thought this is something that, you know, was, was going to help him, you know, golf's difficult enough as it is. And if you think there's something out there that, that can, that can make you a better, a better golfer, um, by all means, you should definitely give it a try and to have that courage the many- to do it is, is, you know, kudos hats off. Yeah, I think one of the many things we all admire about him is the fact that he is different and he's not afraid to be different. And not a lot of people have that courage to do that or be that way. Now, I'm just curious, go back to your junior days playing with with Bryson. Was he always that way? Was he always this mad scientist who's a crazy physician and he's always into physics and the mind and how his mind works? Was he always that way, even through junior golf? I mean... I didn't know him like as well when I was really like when I was really young, like 17, 18, you know, you don't, you don't always get into those in-depth conversations, right? Like you don't, mm. you don't get the chance to like ask like, Oh, what are you doing? You know, going home. Are you like, you know, putting balls and salts and trying to see which ones were at? No, you're just kind of like talking about the game. So, it, you know, like, I mean, was he, was he different? Yeah, but we're all different. I mean, I think that's kind of the beauty of golfers is like, you know, you can step up on any hole, and you can see, you know, if, if there's three players, you can see three, three different ball flights with three different clubs. I mean, yeah, you know, we're, we all view things a bit differently. Um, you know, I still remember he would wear those like Payne Stewart looking hats. Like he definitely wore those <laughs> like a lot. Uh, that was always how I could see him. I'm like, oh, there's Bryson over there in the other fairway. You know, it was pretty, pretty <laughs> easy to spot him. Um, but you know, he was just, he was just always a world-class player. Like he just, you know, from, from, from the time that I knew him and, you know, when, when, when he, when he was younger until now, I mean, he's always been one of those players that you're like, yeah, that guy could do something really special. Um, and it always seemed like he wanted to, like, it always seemed like that was, mm-hmm. that was a goal of his and he always worked really hard at it. I mean, you could, you could tell that, you know, he, he wanted to win. And, uh, you know, I think that's part of the bond that we share is that's something I, I I've been the same way as well as I want to win. Like I want to go out there and I want to give it everything I got and, I, I want to play John Catlin golf and he wants to play Bryson DeChambeau golf, uh, but we yeah. both want to win. So I think that's, I think that's part of the bond. Yeah. Um, as Jerry mentioned, uh, Charles is uh, unknown whether he's going to come back or not this season, depending on how he's recovering with his injury. Uh, but you are also leading the international series rankings right now uh, by fairly comfortable number 150 plus points uh the seven events left two of them are in thailand uh how how confident are you for the rest of the international series season because obviously as we we know you there are several ways to get into the live golf league but the international series is certainly one of the ways to do it so uh, how much is that on your mind and how are you sort of tackling the rest of the international series season? It's seven events and we're already in August. So mm-hmm. that's a pretty intense schedule you got. Yeah. I mean, but that's, that's how it always is. I mean, it's always intense. Um, I think that's one of the things that, you know, is appealing about live is, you know, it's 14 events, you know, when, when you're playing other tours, it's, it can be, you know, I'd be I'd be hard pressed to tell you the last year I played under 28 events, uh, you know, so it's always it's always intense. Uh, you know, the the International Series Order of Merit. Yeah, that's my number one priority um, after seeing live, after experiencing it, after, 
you know, playing with those guys, playing the golf courses, seeing, seeing that team aspect. I think that's really cool. Um, uh, and, and just, and just the opportunities that live gives us. I think it's, I think it's incredible. And, uh, so international series is top of the list, you know, those seven events, I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm physically ready to play mentally ready to go, um, doing everything I can to give myself the best chance to win those. I think I've done a really good job so far. That's why I have believed that I have, but we still got seven events and anything can happen. And there's a lot of great players up there. And I think everybody, I, I don't think there's any secrets about live anymore. I think everybody on that, on that, on that leaderboard wants to get that spot. And there's a big target on my back. And you know what? I welcome that. I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. Um, you know, I'll, you, I, I don't, I don't step away from a challenge. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, here's your challenge. You have an opportunity. They don't, uh, be, I mean, unless another reserve gets in these last few events, you have, you're up to 12 points. You're pretty much guaranteed a finishing in what we call the open zone where a team can sign you if, during the, during the period where they're signing players after the season's over. Um, but a win would pretty much, by my, by my math now, would get you enough points to be in the top 24. You have two tournaments. If you win one, you're a member of Live. You're a, you're a Live team player next year. Um, I know that's a, that sounds so simple because it's 54 players and they're all great players. And it is obviously a different level of competition than pretty much anywhere in the world, actually, um, even though it's a small field. It's doable. It's very doable. Oh, 100%. Um you know, there's the guys that are there, world class players. You know, they're they're household names. They're guys that you've watched for you know 10, 20 years. They've won majors. They've won Ryder Cups. Um, but I know I know what I'm capable of. All, all I need is enough opportunities. And yeah, I I, I believe I can win anywhere. Um, you know, any any tournament as long as I as long as I have enough chances and I can I can figure it out. Yeah, I want to win. And uh, so as long as I keep getting those opportunities, yeah, I think I think I'm going to win. Um, when when is it going to happen? I don't know. Uh, but I've always said it for a long time. It's not it's not if it's when. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, if I can get those next two, that would be amazing. I'll take full I'll take full uh, take full focus and I'll be ready to go. We'll see what happens. Well, you came yeah. came pretty close in Nashville. You're in that final group in Nashville uh, with Terrell Hatton. Uh, you strike me as someone who has a very strong self-belief in what you do and your process and the way you do things. Um, as you said, everyone's different. Where does that come from? Uh, where do you get that self-belief from? It's a good question. Um, I would say a big part is my, is my, is my practice and my hard work. Um, you know, I think you can, I think you can shout, shout affirmations in the mirror as long as you want, but if you don't, if you don't believe in the work that you're putting in, um, you know, it's going to be difficult to execute in under those difficult circumstances where it's all on the line. And, you know, it, I guess the nice thing for me is it's like, Hey, I've been here before I can do it again. You know, I've hit this shot thousands of times. So what's the difference? Okay. My heart rate might be up a little bit. There might be a few more people around watching, but at the end, it's just another golf shot. Uh, you know, I remember Tiger was talking about that with Charlie, you know, he's like, you know, I've, I've always told Charlie, like, it doesn't matter if there's a million people watching or there's nobody watching. It's just another golf shot. And your job is to just hit that golf shot. And, uh, that's something that I really, really believe in. And so, yeah, I think, I think it comes from my hard work, um, both mentally and physically, you know, the mental is an important part of the game and you always have to be working on that as well. And, uh, you know, my coach has really helped me with that. He's been a big part of why I'm confident in myself is it's like he's always kept me on the straight and narrow. He's always kept me on the right path. He's given me the right information. Um, and I've just stuck with it. OK, it's like, all right, we're going to we're going to work on these three things. OK, I go in, I spend I spend the hours and then, OK, like I'm starting to master those. And then, OK, we move on to this or like, you no, know, you need a little bit of work on that. And we just kept fine tuning, fine tuning, fine tuning. And uh, the more and more you fine tune, the more and more you see the dispersion come in, that self-confidence comes up. Yeah. You um repetition. You were a... yes, you, you you're pretty well traveled, as we documented. You're a student athlete of the of the year at UNM, otherwise known as yes, the Harvard sir. of the Southwest. Kidding. No, but uh, <laughs> right. one thing one thing about playing golf, I, I got recruited there, and then the coach at the time gave my scholarship to some guy from South Dakota or something. And uh, so I ended up going to Arizona, which turned out all right. But I, I that was when Dwayne Knight, the now retired from okay. UNLV coach, 
coach there. That's how old I am. Um, and then I went to be uh, one of Bryson's dad's teammates at Arizona, as it turns out. Small world that it nice. is. Anyway, playing college golf in New Mexico, I think, prepares you to play worldly golf because you'll face every condition there. And not to mention one of the windiest places ever to play golf on the on the uh, University South course. Um, you're, you're correct. <laughs> so much so. So much so that you, once you did get uh, status on the on the European tour, the DP World Tour, you won what you won in Spain, you won in Austria, you run won in Ireland, you won all over Asia. Now, what is it about? I mean, thirty three years old and well traveled and and being comfortable in all different environments, um, is this your time to become a household name? I'd love to be. I mean, I think that I think that has to be earned. Uh, you know, I don't think that's, I don't think that's given away, but yeah, I mean, I'd love, I'd love to be, I'd love to be a household name. I'd love to be, you know, synonymous with some of those great players and, but I'm going to have to put in the work. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have to keep performing well at bigger, at bigger events. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully I can win a couple of those and then that's, mm -hmm. that's how it happens. But, uh, yeah, I'd love that. I mean, I think that'd be I think that'd be cool. And I think the influence that comes with that is uh, something to be really, really treasured. You know, you can you can you can really impact a lot of people when you when you, uh, you know, are able to become become that household name, so to speak. I think, what do you I think, think the it, point of my what, the point of my question ahead, and that very leading question. Sorry, so that very leading question was that you, yours isn't a traditional route. It was the whole no. point to where you're at now. And it's never no. too late, is it? No, it never is. No, it's never too late. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, VJ got the world number one and in, in his in his 40s, you know, had one of his mm -hmm. had one of his best seasons, you know, late later on later on in his career. Um, I think that's the beauty of golf is there's no real like you don't like there's not like as much of a ticking time clock as there is in other sports, you know, football. If you're in your 30s and you know, you're still playing, you're 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 in the you're in the minority. Uh, you know, other sports are very similar in that, but I think that's the beauty of golf is, you know, as long as you can stay fit, um, you can, you can play good golf and good, good golf into your fifties and sixties, you know, look at, look at, look at, look at Bernhard Langer. I mean, he's playing some of the best golf of his career. Like, I mean, it's so yeah, to your point, it's never too late. Uh, what I'm just curious, what do you think is that final piece of the puzzle for you to become that household name, what what is the difference right now? Ooh, I thought I asked tough questions. That's, that's a great. A that's one. a great. One. <laughs> great um, you know, a major for sure. I think yeah. that's. I think that's big. I think you. I, I think that's that's the pinnacle. I mean, I you know, I would say those four events. That's that's the highest level of our game. I think that's always been that way. You know. Whether what 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 happens in the future, we don't know. But as of right now, I would say that's the that's the pinnacle of our game. Um, and you know, I I think I think winning on live. I think you know, live is becoming a very very well put together brand. You know, people people know about it. Like it's worldwide. I mean, it's you know, you you have tournaments in Asia, you have tournaments in Australia, you have tournaments in Europe, you have tournaments in America. Uh, it sounds mm -hmm. like it's going to be even more international going forward. Um, so you, you win one of those events, all of a sudden you're, you're winning on a global tour. Um, mm. you know, European tour doesn't play on all those continents. Asian tour doesn't play on all those continents, you know, lives the only one I can think of. So you, you win one of those and all of a sudden it's like, I've won on a tour that competes everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, I think you pair those together and you've got a, you got a pretty winning, winning formula for that. It's an interesting perspective. I mean, you're talking to two huge believers in the product. And I think we've already crossed that threshold. Obviously there was, you know, there was some bad narrative and still is to a large extent, but you, I tend to ignore that now because when you go to tournaments and you talk to people and you proudly wear your live stuff through the airports, um, people are fans. They, they, they're not, they're not minions. They're sheep that have to follow this driven narrative and, uh, and they've spoken and it's, it is a success. It's a huge thing to win a live event. John Rahm, who who is one of the top what three or four best players in the entire universe, uh, got emotional. I mean, he got emotional on that green. How big 100%. it meant, how big it was for him to win an event, 100%. to win out there. Hundred yeah. percent. 
So yeah, you don't. We don't need to. I don't think apologize for it. You're still playing uh, other tours, and you're seeing other people who might cast a little bit of a you know dispersion about it. That's that's so quickly coming to an end. Even some of the haters are now writing positive things about Eddie Pepwell for crying out loud gave us kudos the other day. Hey, that guy, what? That guy what? about reaching the younger audience. Yes, I love it. I'll tell you uh, what. Last week, last week of any. Uh, I mean, any other week that we've, we've played this year, I, I don't know about you, John, but I noticed so many more kids at the JCB event than any other event. We, we've we had a lot of kids in every single event, but last yeah. week it was an outstanding number yeah, of kids no. that were at that event and and how many of them were walking holes, not just parking themselves on a hole, they no. walked so no, many holes to support yeah, their yeah. favorite players. How cool is that? Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you if you I, think about awesome. the access, right, for them compared to how when we were growing up, I mean, you and I are pretty similar age. Jerry's ancient. Um, Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> Ouch, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a usual occurrence for us. Oh, this, doesn't, this is nothing. This oh, is not boy. old. One. One an episode, usually one an episode. I give him shit about how oh, old shit. he is. Yeah, so um, get to your point. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think about it as if I, like so many of those kids were about eight, nine, ten years old. And that was kind of when I started playing golf. Mm -hmm. And for them to have that caliber of players, that field come to their backyard to play and they are able to then have access to watch them and the best part is, is a shotgun start, so they don't have to stay there all day. They can jump holes and watch John Rahm, Terrell Hatton, Paul Casey, their home favorites, right? Whoever they want to watch, Cam Smith, you. They can just hop around and have access to watch every single... Imagine if we had that growing up. I mean, I, you grew up in Sacramento, so you probably had more access to PGA events than I did. But, I mean, the the, the impact of, of an event like that for the future of golf, I mean, that's got to be pretty cool to be a part of oh it's really cool uh you know it and i i agree like there was there was so much support i mean english fans are always great i mean they they they, they love their sport and you know they'll come out they'll come out and support it but especially golf but even i mean i've played i've played a lot in england you know i've played a lot of golf tournaments in england a lot of golf tournaments in europe and i've never seen fans like that especially like you said the younger the younger fans were out there and, you know, I know when I was younger, it would be hard for me to watch a tournament for nine hours, nine, ten hours. You know, I just didn't have I just didn't have the attention span. But, you know, five hours, that's just a normal 18 holes around, you know, when you're playing with your dad. You know, like I, I could I could do that, especially if it was like all the players like you named, like all the all those greats that, you know, you look up to, uh, you know, if they're all right there. I mean, this is this is really cool, you know, and they're all, they're all on the range an hour, hour and a half before they're around. They're all on the chipping green and they're all on the putting green. And, um, you know, I mean, that's, that's a big reason why I am a professional golfer is I got a chance to see these great players. And if I would have had access like this, I mean, it might've even spurred me on even more. So yeah, I think it's really, really cool what it's doing for the younger generation. Yeah. Um, how many autographs did you sign last week? Lost count. I lost count. I, I I just kept, I just kept signing. I just like I basically gave myself 15 extra minutes every day when I was walking up to the range. I just started at the very bottom, worked my way all the way up to the top. That's you know, awesome. I, now, yeah, are, are you like me? I think it's do, part of. Do you feel obligated to sign it legibly so they actually know who it was when you walk away? Because that's how I always had to. I it's try. Like, I mean, my, your autograph. I'm my like, autograph. I have no not, idea who not, I am. Not the most yeah. beautiful, but I mean, I think you can tell it's John Catlin. I mean, there's a J, <laughs> and then there's some squiggles, and then there's a C, and then there's a T. I mean, other than that, it's all squiggles. But I think you can tell it looks like John. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's funny because I saw so many pictures of you uh, on your social media of you just signing autographs. And I think it's so awesome that you do that because I always say this to people, like even in pro -ams, for you, it might feel like as a player, it's like, you know, it's like playing pro -ams, it's slow, right? It's, it's difficult. And then you got to sign autographs, even when you don't have your best day. But for those fans, it's like, a once in a lifetime experience, right? Whether they tee it up with you or whether they get your autographs. Uh, so I think it's really awesome, awesome that you, you do that and you take time to do that. You know, I think earlier, I'm going to circle back to what you said earlier about being different. You said every golfer is different and that what that's really what makes the sport 
beautiful in its own in its own ways. What makes you different, John? If you were to compare yourself to the other golfers, what makes you different? That's a great question. You're asking you're asking some doozies right now. I mean, I, you're making you're making me like <laughs> mic drop over here. You're making you're making me think. Oh. Uh, I got a good coach. Jerry's my coach, so yeah. No, coach. no, no, no. I, 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 I was jealous. That was an excellent question. That was yeah, yeah that's a great question. Um, what makes you different, John Catlin? What makes you different? I mean, I, I think it. I think I go about it differently. Uh, you know, evidenced by my journey. I think I've been proving a lot of people wrong for the whole my whole journey. I don't think anybody, you know, from the time I was three, four years old when I started until, you know, recently, I don't think anybody really thought that I was going to become what I've become. And, you know, I think that's part of what's made me the golfer that I am is it's like, you know, a little bit of that, like, oh, you don't think it's going to work. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Uh, you know, so I think there's a little bit of that in there. You know, I think I, I think I exemplify a little bit more of, you know, maybe, maybe a bit more of how it, how it really is. You know, I wasn't just straight up to the top. You know, there was there, there was peaks and valleys and there was difficult times and there was good times. And, uh, you know, I think I've been very open and honest about that. You know, I've, I've had my struggles. I've had my victories. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I haven't shied away from any of it. Um, I think that's part of what makes me different. Uh, I've tried to always do it the right way, but, you know, I'm, I make mistakes, too. Um, mm -hmm. But. You know, I think there, I think there are some similarities, but yeah, I would say those are, those are the, those are the differences that kind of come to mind, you know, like, you know, the doctors basically told my parents that they shouldn't even have me. And here I am as a professional golfer. So it's, you know, it's, I've been, I've been proving people wrong since, since, since before I can even remember. And, uh, you know, I think that should give a lot of, a lot of, you know, young kids that might have similar, you know, ambitions or dreams, or maybe it's even in a different, you know, a different avenue or a different arena. And people are telling you that you can't do it, or, you know, you're, you're too small, or you're too skinny, or your swing's different, or whatever you're in, you know, maybe you're in a different arena, and they're telling you you can't do it for whatever reason they're giving you. You don't have to listen to that. You know, if you, if you that. believe that you can do it, you know, you, you win from within, like, that's something my coach yeah. taught me. Uh, you know, you win from you win from in here, and uh, you know I think I'm a I think I'm a big testament to that. I love that. Your I'm gonna write it down. Doctors, yeah, doctors told your parents <laughs> they shouldn't even have you. My parents told each other they shouldn't have had me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. Now, uh, uh, now seriously, back in 2016, your thumb is resting over that cursor. I mean, do you ever? Take yourself back to that moment, feeling as blessed now that you didn't quit, and wonder had you pressed that button, where you would be now. What you, what in the hell would you be doing? The second part of that question, no, I don't. I don't wonder what 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 would have happened. Um, I never quit. Like that's something about me. You know, that's maybe back to your other question. That's different. Is like I just I've never quit. Like I never I never gave in. And I think that was a moment where it could have happened, but my true self was like, no, nope, can't do it. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't give up. You know, there's something, there's something better that I didn't even know was going to happen, but my, you know, my brain did whatever was telling me there's something more, you know, there's something more even, no, not, not even for yourself, but for others, you know, you can, you can, you can make a big difference. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't press the button. <laughs> Thank God I did. Right. <laughs> what would you have done though? Would you have worked at, I mean, what did you study in school? I studied business, um, okay. but you know, I think part of what makes me successful, I never had a plan B. I was going to, I was going to do this and I was going to make it work. I was going to, you know, I never, you know, people have always asked me, they're like, Oh, what, what would you, what would you have done if you weren't a pro golfer? Or was there ever a backup plan? No, I never, I never even considered a backup plan. I was going to, I was going to be a professional golfer or I was going to die trying. And, you know, I think that's, there's a lot of other players that I've talked to that have had, a, had that similar mindset. And I think that they've had a lot of success as well. Um, you know, I think, I think you got to give it your all. You got to, you got to, you got to back yourself even when nobody else is backing you. I, I admire that, that, that perseverance. And I really admire that resilience from you. Uh, I'm just curious uh, now that you've had some success, you've won 15 professional events worldwide. Uh, you've obviously have, 
had some success on Live as well, as well as the International Series. Why are you still staying at that little motel in Hua Hin for $150 a month? I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious. Every time, every time you go back there, it's all the memories. It's all the things you've mm -hmm. overcome. It's the, you know, you remember when you used to walk up to the driving range. You remember when you used to practice seven days a week for eight hours. You know, you remember all the times when you didn't think you were going to make it. You remember all the good times when you would practice with seven or eight of your buddies. You know, it kind of brings you back to what got you there. You know, what, what, Stop what taking. you know. You know yeah, you don't you don't ever want to get away from what made you successful in the first place. Uh, you know, I think that can be a pitfall that a lot of people fall into. And, uh, you know, my coach kind of urged me, he's like, John, just keep it. You know, it doesn't have to be where you go all the time, but keep it. And every time you go back there, you're going to you're going to you're going to you're going to remember all the things you've overcome. There's going to be there's going to be a smile on your face. You know, you're going to go back and you're going to be like. It's unbelievable. And they and they were and they were good to me when I had nothing to offer to them. You know, they're just they're good people there at the Billabong. You know, it's uh, when I when I was when I was a nobody, when I was another guy who was just trying to make it on the Asian tour, they were they were supportive. You know, I actually mm. for a year, I actually had their logo on my sleeve, you know, and they, <laughs> gave, me, they awesome. gave me they gave me they gave me they gave me free rent. So, you know, that's that was awesome. back. That was back when I was trying to make it. Um, so, you that's know, they great. they. They were there. They supported me back when back when I was nothing, you know, I was just another guy who had big, big, big aspirations and who hadn't really done anything to prove it yet. That's awesome. Shout out to the guys at Billabong, man. You did the right thing by supporting this guy because look at where he's at now. <laughs> Billabong is the restaurant. Yeah. Did they teach you to cook anything? <laughs> uh, no, I like, I like, I like, I like letting them cook. <laughs> They're do you speak they're gonna Thai, cook it a lot better than I can. I promise you that. Do you now? Do you speak some Thai? Yeah, Are a little you bit. Fluent? Yeah. No, oh. I'm not fluent. No, no, I'm not fluent. But you know, I can, I can, I can order food. I can direct taxis. I can, I can have basic conversations. I can talk to caddies. Um, you know, I'm always trying to kind of expand that a little bit. Uh, you know, that's. I was saying, uh, uh, you know, yeah. it basically feels like feels Great like feels like beer by the way. Family. <laughs> yeah, very good beer as well. But you know, it's kind of yeah. we call it we call it the we call it the Singha family, and yeah. uh, it's uh, a big it, one. It does feel that way. It it does it does feel that way, and so you know, it it I think it's important to to make an effort to to learn their language. You know, I think that's part of say something know, for us. Say something for us, like maybe. Oh, cop, my name is my. <laughs> <laughs> that means that means hello. How are you? Ah, oh, that's awesome. Yep. That is awesome. Yep. Good for you. Embracing the culture. That, so embracing... You, gotta, you gotta give it the why and show the and yes. show the and show the respect. So that's part of that's yes. part of the culture. Good for you, man. You know, not many people embrace cultures and embrace uh where you live somewhere and really embrace what they're about, embrace all of that stuff. And I think you did it right, you know, doing that and really enjoying that process. And it certainly is showing. I mean, it shows the gratitude that comes through that journey that you've been on. Uh, and now even still going back to staying in that place and yeah, bringing back all those that. memories. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I embrace the hell out of the Singha when I'm there. That's <laughs> yes, please. Please do. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, please um, do, my friend. Now, I, I was going to ask the question, but I'm going to save it for Sue Ann because I'm dying to know. Uh, you're Ooh. in Sweden with your girlfriend, and she does this little segment called... Airway to love, baby. It's here, and I want to know about this. Yes, I want to know about this. Love. This is where you is spill the beans. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. She's Swedish. She lives here Ooh. in uh, Helsinki. Ah. Damn, on, good for okay. you, son. Dig. Yeah. Dig, Sue Ann. Come on, dig. Get the, get the <laughs> okay, stuff. so, all right, come on. Let's get into it. Don't be shy. You don't have to get shy. It's all right. It's all good. It's a safe space. <laughs> it's just us. <laughs> it's just us. And. <laughs> The 200 people that listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> I'll go under, Jer. I'll go under. Um, <laughs> how, how did you guys meet? How long have you guys been dating? Who was the one who asked the question? Give it all. Man. Just just share. Just. <laughs> she's over there. She's over there smiling right now. She's laughing. Ah. At <laughs> What's her name? Sorry. What's her name? Uh, Madeline. Hi, Madeline. 
Yeah, they're saying they're saying they're saying Hi, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we 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 actually matched on Tinder when I was playing Scandinavian mixed uh, 2023. Uh, I was here in Sweden and uh, we didn't get a chance to meet then, uh, but we just stayed we just stayed in contact. Uh, you know, we talked a lot on the phone, FaceTimed, called, and uh, you know, it kind of started from there and. I kept trying to get her to come to tournaments and, you know, being selfish and, uh, you know, she, she, she has a full-time job. And, uh, so, you know, it was difficult for her to just be like, Oh yeah, I'll just come down there and fly down there on, you know, the Friday and come back on the Sunday and go to work on Monday. Like, and, you know, I'm like, why? Like it's, <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 you know, I, I, it took a lot of, it took a lot of persuading, but I finally was able to get her to come down to Madrid in October. Uh, so, and we've been, We've been dating ever since. So basically October 13th. So it's been wow. 10, 10 I mean, months. Yeah. yeah. That wow. was your first time meeting in person? Yep. Wow. She's, what was that she's like? very courageous. What was, <laughs> she's very what, courageous. What was that like? And how, what, like when you first met, what did you meet? And what was the first like impression? Or that, you was still it had like, to be nervous. Oh, so I be oh, I was nervous. Oh, I was very nervous. Yeah, I, I, but I'm sure she was more nervous. Um, she was terrified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, does, she doesn't. She didn't like flying. She's she's getting over that for me. So I feel very lucky that she's doing that. Like, I, you know, I'm like I'm like wow, that's that's pretty that's pretty special. But yeah, I mean when when I first saw her, I was just like, oh my gosh, like how did I get so lucky? <laughs> like no. this, this, is, like, this is unbelievable. Like yeah, yeah, she's a beautiful person inside and out. And uh, oh, I feel lucky to have her. That's awesome. Uh, hey, I want to ask you, because you talked about influences of of your coach and of your family and your background. I know you've only dated for, for 10 months, but it seems like those 10 months have been beautiful months. Uh, how has she influenced you um, in your life? I'm just, I'm happy. Like I haven't been, I haven't been this happy in, since I can, since I can even remember. Uh, and, you know, happy golfers generally play good golf. So yeah, I think she's definitely, she's definitely had a big part of it. You know, if I ever get down on the road or, you know, you know, it gets a little difficult or I had a bad day on the course or whatever, I just come back and I'm like, Hey, you know, she still loves me regardless of whether I play golf or I don't play golf. She just loves me for me as a, who I, who I am as a person. So, you know, that's I'm amazing. pretty sure I can tell her tomorrow I'm, I'm done playing golf. She's like, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll figure it out. So it's pretty special. That is amazing. That's special. Yeah, that is special and hard to find. So good for you yes. both. Thanks yeah, for spilling yeah, the beans, awesome. by the way. You, you realize they always get all giddy. Okay? <laughs> they always get all like yeah, yeah, nervous we and stuff. Are. And I, I really, I really are. quite like, I enjoy that. I enjoy the process of like. Really? <laughs> yeah. Just, <laughs> just golfers nice. are always just like, just so, you know, they're so stoic. like yeah. stoic and like, yeah, and then you talk about their love life and they get all romantic and cute. It's awesome. I love I love seeing that side of our athletes. It's awesome. <laughs> we're just we're just human beings who happen to get the golf ball the hole faster than most. I mean, we're not. But we're people not, don't we're not get to different. see that very often. No, that's they the, don't. That's the beauty of it. People don't get to see that side of you guys where you yeah. are normal human beings. You like everybody. We all seek love and affection and belonging and purpose you know we're all right. humans at the very base level so yeah anyways madeline if you're listening good for you you're a brave girl <laughs> oh, I'm not sure you're dead, but i'll tell you <laughs> um well anyways we hope to meet uh, her in person uh, i know. We hope to meet her in person um yeah. a couple of things before we go I'm going to start quoting Noah on many occasions now. You've given me a lot of stuff to use on the air. Winning comes from nice. within is awesome. Now, what yeah. do I call them? Noahisms or 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 narc philosophy or what the hell? I mean, we need it. We need a catchy <laughs> phrase for it. Montgomeryisms. Montgomeryisms. I like. <laughs> yeah. It. Or like Noahisms. Like either one. Either one yeah. works. You know, there there yeah. there was one of his one of his students. Just uh dad started calling Noah Nostradamus because he seems like he just knows like he knows what's going to happen before it even happens there it so is. there it is perfect yeah. that yeah. is brilliant uh, uh that's you gotta brilliant. put me okay. in touch with him someday I want to yeah, I want to uh, get his number or something yeah I want to meet him too yeah. I want to hear I want to yeah. hear all the stories of, of yeah all the stuff he's, that he's 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 very interesting he's a lot more interesting than me so <laughs> 
Well, it's pretty, it's pretty, it, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, Jerry, you good? Should I wrap this yeah, up chill. so that he that can was, go back was... and enjoy his little time, his, his very precious time he's, with, um, he's given us an hour of his time and it's not really, it's like a, it's not a honeymoon, but it sure feels like it to him. I'm sure. So yeah. yeah go. Nice to have time <laughs> okay. together. Get, get out of here. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. All right. One, one final question. Um, you're 33 years old. You now won 15 times worldwide. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Hopefully, hopefully a captain of, of a live team and a major winner. Mm, there you go. Perfect. We love it. Sound? We love it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is the really definition good. of success in the yeah, media. I'm like, I feel like that's, I feel like that success. sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. And uh, thank you for sharing everything with us and, and allowing us to get to know you. Um, and, yeah. and it is pretty awesome. And you're very inspiring uh, for everyone who's listening. I'm sure they they'll be inspired too. Um, That's awesome. So thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Appreciate course, your time. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll see you at Greenbrier. Yeah. I mean, I'll be there just whether oh, yeah, I'll be you'll playing. be there. Right. Right. I'll be there. Yeah. So sure. we'll see you in Green Bar. Sure. You'll see me. <laughs> I'll be okay, there. Okay, sounds I good. Be, uh, I hope right, to be man. rocking up the breakfast in the Crusher's hat again. So, Perfect. Awesome. All right. Well, take care. Right. Enjoy your time in Sweden and uh, right. enjoy the next couple of weeks off. Well, next week's International Series England. So I'll be, I'll be, right. I'll be ready, so. I'll be ready right. for That's that. Right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that. enjoy this week off then. Be correct. <laughs> correct. A few more days and then uh, we're back at it. Okay, right. sounds Cheers, good. Well, John. good luck Thanks, and man. play great, okay? All right. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. That was, was, uh, was fun. It was, that very, was really very fun. fun. What a guy. I know. What a guy. I, I love and, that line. What? Win from within. That's a great line. There was line. a lot of Noah isms in there. Yeah, that but that's so true. You just never really heard it put that way. That is so true. Yeah. That's because yeah. when you're out there, I mean, we've seen it in the last two events. You see guys battling themselves, their emotions, their nerves. It, it's you, golf is the only sport where nothing moves except you. All other sports yeah. are reactionary. Golf, everything is still except you. So it's yeah. it's only you against yourself. It, it's the yeah. definition of the sport, which is what makes it so absolutely I mean, mind-numbingly maddening at times because there's yeah. nothing else to blame except yeah, being. But I love. Family. I think my biggest takeaway, aside from from what he said there, was the fact that when I asked him why he's still staying at that motel in Wahin, and the reasons he gave me, you know, that's great. Taking stock, really remembering where you came from, basically in a nutshell, is what he said. And I think that is such a powerful thing. You know, you often lose yeah. sight, right, of life and where you started, and and all the hardship that you've been through to get to where you are, which I define his career right now as a fairly successful one. Um, so, you know, I, I think it is pretty cool that he still is living in there, even though he can probably afford to live in a different place. You know what I mean? I'm sure, I'm sure, he, I'm sure it's less of a, less of a full-time residence than it once was, but it's cool. You're right that he keeps in touch with his roots. That's fantastic. Yeah, and so, you know, keeps in touch with the people there, the people that supported him to start with. It does, it's very telling, I, I think, of, of a person when they, they're able to do that. A, yes. a true character of a human being, when they remember yeah. who inspired them, who helped them during the hard times. Yeah. So, yeah. really cool. Uh, anyways, right. uh, Olympics. I know it's already started, so it's kind of like cheating, but who's, who, who's your pick to win this week? Well, there was a certain analyst who had to go on a certain show and pick a dark horse that comes from a country where you might not, you know, that might really change the landscape for golf, where golf is not a big thing. And and I suggested a couple names, and and that that certain analyst, whom I know very well, whose picture might be right behind me over there on that wall, yeah, I mm. believe it is, mm. um, uh, picked Waco, and I thought it was a brilliant pick because he yeah. literally, I mean, he played great last week, played great on Sunday. Um, the, he's played all over the world chasing those elusive and and and, and whatever world ranking bullshit um mm -hmm. and and uh, and a win here would would put a lot of those uh, you know even though i don't think our guys have anything left to prove and we should rise above the fray in terms of the narrative and the haters mm -hmm. um it would be it would you know he, he wouldn't do it but he could stand there on the podium to all those guys and say all right kiss kma now motherfucker yeah yeah, but uh, also I, I think the impact that. of, of there, there, golf 
initially. Yeah, yeah, the impact of golf at home, but there's also that personal motivation from a lot of our guys because they face this unfair um, bias stuff, and it's all just bullshit now. But um, yeah. yeah, and 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 it could really make a difference. I mean, he and Mito already make a difference in their local communities. They're they're they, whenever they're home, they're doing so much to help out kids who who don't have uh, don't have a chance, don't have have far less, and really no no light at the end of the tunnel so to speak that, that's realistic yeah. and they're always trying to help them out in that regard so that that would be the the biggest thing he could possibly accomplish for chile yeah that, i i have to agree with you um also i wanted to uh while i have the platform to do that i wanted to shout out to shannon tan who is our very first um golf olympian for singapore uh, oh really? She's yeah, she's teeing up this week. Uh, so we just wanted to wish her all the very best. Uh, regardless of the results, she's already a champion in our eyes here in Singapore, especially in in our golf industry here, which is not big. It is small, just like um, many growing countries in the sense from from golf perspective. We're certainly one of them, and her impact of making the olympics is huge um obviously Very i know cool. she wants to play well uh but that is really really cool to be able to say that we have a singaporean playing and representing our flag and our country at the olympics for golf so it is pretty awesome the, that we we have someone representing us yeah really cool so wishing her, life, her all the very best yeah. yes for the rest of her life she will be an olympian yes um, exactly and, and that's I know so golf cool that's so cool. Golf is new back into the Olympics. They had it a million years ago, mm -hmm. um, but now this is a third time back in. And when you look at it, and, and Rory even said it would be the biggest thing to happen to him in a, in a decade because he hasn't won a major, but I think it's it's really close to, if not already passed in significance, because there are 16 majors between Olympics. I think this will ultimately be the pinnacle, absolutely the pinnacle of yeah. the sport, just like it is in so many other sports. Yeah, and, and I'm hoping that this would open many, many doors um, for the game of golf here in Singapore and, and the access that that junior golfers can have and will mm -hmm. be inspired to chase that dream. So um, con cool. congrats and all the best. And we wish all our seven golfers the very best as well um, to play well. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, thank you, Jerry. Pleasure as always. And uh Thank you to our listeners and audience. If you're watching this, thank you so much for choosing us as your podcast. Uh, we appreciate you and we appreciate your loyal following. Um, if you do like this podcast, do share it with your friends. We're available on the Live Golf YouTube page as well as Live Golf Plus, as Arlo likes to say it, Plus. Um, we also have our very own social channels at fth underscore live golf or on tiktok instagram as well as the x if you like us do subscribe do like us do follow us and you can find us wherever you get your podcast whether it's spotify apple or wherever you find your podcast so uh please do follow us and uh you can catch all the other episodes that you missed for example last week we had ak on which was pretty cool um so if you missed that you can go back there and listen to the rest of it that's it. That's all Have she good. wrote. Have a good week, girl. <laughs> <laughs>